Hello everyone and welcome to Vuex Patterns, Why Action Matters. So as Jacob told you, uh, my name is Filipa and I'm a senior front-end engineer at GitLab. And today we'll talk about Vuex and data. So nowadays in our everyday jobs as web developers, more and more we build applications where we need to ma manage large data sets and often we combine data uh, coming from multiple sources uh, where we have complex states and larger and larger applications to maintain. Sorry. <laughs> One more back, I think. Now we're good. Okay, so it's very common that we need um, to handle data coming from the API and then we need to handle data where the user is interacting with our application and making changes. So today I will, share, I will share with you some of the challenges that arise from, from handling all these, these complex states and I will also show you that Vuex won't magically solve these problems for you. So let's take a minute to take this in. This is in the Vuex talks. I'm not sure if you know them by heart, but they, they say, Although Vuex helps us deal with shared state management, it also comes with the cost of more concepts and boilerplate. It's a trade-off between short-term and long-term productivity. So let's, let's focus on this part over here. It's a trade-off between long-term, uh, sorry, short-term and long-term productivity. And with this in mind, I will show you some examples of how challenging and handling data can be. So I do some mentorships and one of these days, one of my mentors, she was struggling with a, with a problem. So basically the product where she works, they have two, two versions of the application. They have the web version, which is a desktop app, a normal website, and they have the a mobile native app. And as all products, they have users and the user can edit the profile. So for this product, they believe that it's a lot more common for the user to actually edit the data, is their profile in the web version than the mobile app. But still, they wanna make sure that the mobile app is always up to date. So what they do is they pull the data constantly from the server into the mobile app. So the problem she was struggling with was every time the user started to edit the form on the mobile app, the data would get hijacked because it was being pulled by the, from the server at the same time. So let me show you what was happening. So basically, uh, this is what, what was happening. So if I try to change my name to Batman, I can, like it gets hijacked all the time. So if we look into the code, uh, we can see that we are using vModel with a user object. And if we look to the to the script part, so basically we are using the user directly from the state, which is also that, which is something that UX docs say do not do this, don't ever use directly a property from the state with vModel. You should use a two-way computed property. So let's, let's do that. Let's create um, a username property, a uh, computed property. We have a getter, we have a setter. Let's see if it works. I still can change my data. Uh, it's still getting hijacked by the user because I'm using exactly the same state. So it's being changed in two, directional, in two di directions. So let me give you another example. At GitLab, we have the merge request widget. And it looks like this. And it's basically in every merge request, um, there's a lot of complex states and there's a lot of ifs and elses. Uh, so basically, in order for you to be able to merge a merge request, uh, you cannot be the author of the merge request. Obviously, you need to have maintainer permissions. Your pipeline must be green, it must be approved. There must not be any comments that aren't resolved. There's a lot of complex states. And we have da data coming from multiple sources. So the first time we mount this application, we provide a bunch of data through Rails. Uh, we also provide it through a, a, a global namespace in JavaScript. And then we need to handle the user interacting with it. And we even pull from the API, because imagine that the branch you want to merge to uh, now has conflicts with your branch, so you can't merge anymore. And by the time 
we moved this application from Rails into Vue, you, we were not using Vuex at the time. So basically we have a flex-like um, pattern where your main component supposedly will talk to the store and the service and will provide data down. And then let's keep in mind flex-like. So let me show you the store. Um, it has a bunch of properties, like a lot of properties, and a bunch of methods, and it's, it's a very, very long file. Now let me show you what the main application looks like. So we provide the store into the data function, making it reactive, and then if you see the component, that MR property, if you, if you notice, is not the state, it's the entire store and the service is being provided down. So basically, you are providing all the actions down to every single component. And yes, this is as dangerous as it sounds. So a few weeks ago, we had this message on Slack from Natalia saying, please don't mutate props directly in a view component. It sounds super obvious, right? But why would you do that? Well, because you can. It's easy, everything is there. Now there's no need to provide events up. Uh, you can mutate everything directly from your components. So why did Natalia send us this message? So before you merge a merge request, there's a checkbox that allows you to squash your commits. And although the user was clicking it, the, the API request was always sending it to false. And the reason for that was the store was being directly mutated inside the component. Not only the store was being updated, it was a property that was being updated. So it was all mess. <laughs> it was very, very fun. You can ask Natalia how fun it was. I'm pretty sure she will tell you it wasn't fun. So another thing that I want to share with you, I see this a lot in, in interviews where we ask, why would you use Vue? What can Vue do for you? And so I, I, I have here my two favorite answers. The first is this one. Vue will allow you to do state management. And my favorite one, your entire team will write code the same way. Still, I can't understand how is this possible. Like, is it magic? So I've come, what I've come to realize, not only in code reviews, in interviews with mentorships, is that most people have a very hard time understanding what Flux is, what, what problems do Flux solve? Because clearly neither Flux, Vuex, they will not solve magically any problem for you. In fact, they can make your life a lot harder as you just saw. So let me ask you one question. How many of you have thought or actually said or heard anyone saying, oh my God, why do I need to write this much boilerplate? Why there's no sense in writing all of this? Well, there is, uh, and this is exactly why. So you don't end up with weird states, and you can look at your code and understand exactly what is happening, when is happening, and why is happening. So I'm sure you know this already. Uh, I guess it's, it's never enough to remember. A Flux application will have three major parts, a dispatcher, the stores, and the views. And it's very, very important to keep in mind that this is not the same as model view controller. Although controllers do exist in a, in a Flux application, they are controller views. So they are the main view that you find at the top of the hierarchy that's supposed to only provide the state down, only the data down to the children. And in a Flux application, uh, you also have action creators, which are dispatcher methods um, that are used to support the semantic API that describes all changes through the life cycle of your application. And the most important thing uh, we need to retain about Flux is that it avoids MVC in the favor of the unidirectional data flow, uh, which was something that was not happening in both of the applications I just saw you, although they were using either Flux or Vuex. So at GitLab, our front-end team is quite big. Um, can you guess how many of us write code the same way? We use Vue, so maybe. 
No, none of us writes code the same way. So we documented a pattern for our Vuex code, which is highly inspired in the Flux documentation and in the Redux documentation, um, and follows a user-based action pattern. So we have this kind of action-created methods, which basically are actions that dispatch other actions, and this structure allows us to understand um, from a user point of view exactly what is happening. So let me show you what the pattern looks like. Uh, hoping this may be hel uh, helpful for anyone else. So imagine that you have an application with a list of users, you just render users. The first thing that happens when, when the user opens your application is that a request will be made. So we have two namespaces, a request receive namespace and a fetch namespace. So the fetch namespace will be the one responsible to call the request and receive uh, names, uh, the actions um, depending on, the, on the, st the status of the response. And then in our mutations, we can understand why the loading state is being set to true. It's because there was a request. And the same will happen once we receive something, our loading state will be false again. And in our main controller view, in our main app file, only the, the fetch namespace will be accessible there. So we only call one action. And one of the reasons we did this, besides the fact that we all write code in different ways, and this is helpful to have just one way, is that before we would have not a clear separation of concerns. So sometimes actions were being called in the components and then others inside the actions file. Sometimes the loading state was being toggled and you wouldn't understand exactly why, why, why this is happening. And worse than that, sometimes we, we would have this. And this example is in the main app file, but we would have this in children down, down the road. So by following this pattern, we guarantee that no one will be mutating the state directly. Um, we make life's life easier, the maintainer's lives a lot easier because if you don't spot this pattern right away in a merge request, then probably something wrong is happening. And also, it's a lot easier to maintain the code. We are 28, I think more, front-end developers. Uh, so if I go into a different area of the code, I don't have to understand how that ARIA works if every one of us writes code like this. Also, we have a unidirection data flow, and the actions are contained, and they are human-friendly. I can actually understand, as a programmer, what is happening. And last but not least, unit tests are also a lot easier. And this is it. Thanks. Thanks so much.